So I received the uh, um, Japanese Cuisine Goodwill Ambassador from the Japanese government this year. So now I have more opportunity to bring and spread the Japanese culture and the food culture um, into the United States. We start with uh, Prosimo. We usually it's hobby. Yeah, at the you know, counter, customers. Even the dining time sometimes too. Here we have the smoked oyster. with the very ripe uh, Japanese persimmon. So this has been smoked already. I'm just gonna cut it in half. Right there. And we have a little bit of olive oil. Pink peppercorn. Just a bit. One. Two, that's enough. This one is a reduction of the red vinegar. And then we're gonna squeeze the persimmon juice over it. So this is going to be the dried persimmon from Japan stuffed with uh, duck egg marinated in our house made uh, fish sauce for two days. Um, take a little piece of the blue cheese and the stuffed inside. That gives uh, more of the deeper salty flavor to the very sweet dried persimmon. Take the top off, then you have an opening egg inside. And push it it's so I can close it completely. Bamboo skewer to close the opening. The top is closed and uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of flour. So just pat it. Then dip it into this uh, egg white that's being whipped. Then move on to this very fine panko. Then we're gonna deep fry the whole thing. Now, here's a deep fried uh, dry persimmon. I'll just cut it in half right here. Perfect. And place it. There you go. Next, we are going to make hot pot using the kombu boat. And the first, I'm going to make the, the kombu boat here. And this kombu has been soaked in the water for a couple of hours, nice and soft. So I can just fold it and uh, let's have this one side bundled up. And I have a strip. There you go, is a kombu boat. So now we have the, the charcoal grill here. And we have a hot sake to pour that in. There you go. And now, I'm gonna add the one piece of oyster in here. And also the house-made tofu. Just made it nice and hot, very creamy. Put this one piece in here. All right, so now the tofu and it's bubbling. It's nice and hot, and the oyster is cooked as well. And already have a lot of umami coming from uh, this kombu with oyster together. So we don't need to add any more of the additional flavor except uh, just pure straight soy sauce. And then additional shaved kombu. This is gonna add extra umami into the dish. There we go. This 
is a kind of a premium soy sauce from Japan. The difference between the soy sauce that's made here in the United States, the Japanese one, it's a lot more concentrated. The color, if you just look at the color, you can see it. It's much darker. And that means it has a lot more umami coming from a soybean. And also the aroma is absolutely incredible. You can really smell the soy sauce. The Japanese fruits. There's a reason why those are expensive. So much care has been put into for each fruit. Um, the development takes 10 years, 20 years to come up with a new product of the say strawberry or the melon. And the, once they have that, um, they uh, each farmer is uh, really um, taking so much effort to make sure that each year they make it even better than previous year to keep the standard higher. So I'm making the dorayaki, the Japanese style, the pancake. So this is quite famous, you know, the anime, the Doraemon, the, the Japanese famous the character. Uh, he really like this uh, uh, pancake. So then I'm making that. It's simple, very, you know, easy ingredients. So the made from uh, flour, sugar, and uh, honey in it. So I'm pick it up. There you go. So now I'm going to put the red bean paste. So this is the basic style dorayaki. Usually, you know, it's just the, the red bean paste by itself. But this time, so, you know, we are using the Japanese strawberry because it's a very flavorful and then very soft texture. Uh, totally different compared to the, you know, the US the strawberry. So, and then the Put it here, and then I'm going to put the butter on it. The butter also the made from uh, Japanese strawberry and then very flavorful. Then cover it with the pancake, so pancake sandwich like. Uh, Cut it half. The Japanese fruits, I think it's, it's just a perfect uh, flavor wise, the texture wise, the aroma, everything is perfect fruit. So we don't really want to touch it. Maybe just adding different ingredient to bring more of the, the, the good quality of the Japanese fruits. This one is coming from uh, Hokkaido. So inside is uh, orange color one. I'm gonna cut the top off now. I'm gonna take out the seed here. Just hollow it out. Peel off all the skin. The sweetness is inside of it. The closer to the skin, it looks like uh, wasting, but it's just not the sweetness that we are looking for, especially for the dish that we are going to be doing. And usually the bottom part is the sweetest part of the melon. So the top part I can cut a little more than the bottom. Now we have the ice cream here. It's just a, a vanilla, simple vanilla ice cream, but not too much of a vanilla, more like a milk ice cream. And I'm going to stuff 
Now we are going to put it in a freezer that goes down to minus 60 degrees and that's the temperature we need to make this dish. So this one, uh, this is a different melon. Uh, this is from Shizuoka, this one. Inside is a green, just like a honeydew melon. And I'm gonna cut it in half here. Oh, beautiful. Wow, look at that. You can see how sweet this is, how ripened this is. And I'm just gonna use these to get the round bowl of melon as a topping. This is all nice and frozen, uh, just out of the freezer. It's really hard and it has to be really hot. So I'm gonna set it into this uh, really antique Japanese ice shaver. It's all manual. This time we're gonna use the Chateau Ikim. This is just a one of a kind uh, dessert wine uh, from France. Um, not just the sweetness that we are looking for, but this is this is a wine that is sweet, but not sweet. It's got really complex flavor and a lot of uh, beautiful aroma. That just brings more of the this Japanese melon, good part of it. And then just top it with the Shizuoka musk melon, crown melon. Go. The Japanese fruits is just perfect as is and uh, we don't want to do much to it but uh, we can't just cut it and serve it on the plate so um, just remembering the child food flavor that we enjoyed. Probably most Japanese understand this flavor of the melon with the ice cream, with a little bit of a adult touch by adding a dessert wine to it. And it just uplift more into a high quality dessert.